of miscellaneous people who get killed towards the end. Uh, he could have been one of them, but he's he's on the bad guy's side, so it's 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 likely he gets work. Yeah, he's he's great in it. He's like a, he's a good villainous character in that. It's like a second in command of the main guy. I had fun with Rogue. I watched it with my father-in-law, Meg's dad. Well, he played darts. And I always know when he loves a movie because he just doesn't throw darts for 20 minutes and I sit there waiting. <laughs> Stand there staring at the movie. <laughs> but yeah, he was just watching that scene. I got to say, the beginning of this movie, I wasn't sure what you had put on because you've been watching so many shark things lately for research. And I'm going, did you put the movie on? Is this starting? What are we watching here? Because it did not seem like part of the movie. Mm-hmm. With, with the two of them getting killed? Yeah. And then Trent Slater blowing up. Or Slater Trent. Yeah. Or what, like, Trader Slant? Isn't that Trader, what I call them? Trader Slant. I kept thinking uh, Trent Reznor earlier, and I was like, that's not right. Stop <laughs> thinking that, because you're going to say it on the podcast. <laughs> that is incorrect. Uh, Trent Reznor? Nine Inch Nails, an Oscar-nominated Amazing. composer for two movies this year. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And this is the guy who wrote that song, Closer, Wouldn't which I can't awesome sing on this. would if he was in this movie? Just a cameo. Trent Reznor? Yeah. Who he would vo- he be? He voices the baby shark, he's the one doing this movie. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. You had the captions on earlier. It said mm-hmm. baby shark screeching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got it wrong, too, my, my, the subtitles, because there's a scene where Daniel is yelling when Leslie's being eaten, and he goes, ah! And the subtitles went, no! I agree with the subtitles. I hear the end. Because <laughs> I was thinking, when, when Aaron stumbles across Daniel, Daniel's already in the fourth stage of grief. He's already yeah. in, in despair, depression. He's mm-hmm. he, So that screaming of no, that's denial and anger, both in one. He's screaming no, he's like denying, but it's a scream, it's, a, it's anger. So he, between then and, and when Aaron finds him, he he did some kind of bargaining, I don't know. And then uh, Aaron convinces him to accept it. So we see Daniel do 80% of the, the Dabda steps. Uh, which wow. Was, which I liked. That's deep. Yeah. Wow, he nails it. In blue. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's green in that scene, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, c- can, we, can we compare some strutting? Who do you think yeah, was okay. the best oh, yeah. struts? Oh. I think we had... Yeah. We had a translator strutting through a corridor, moving the debris out of the way. And at the end of this chapter, you've got Misty. She grabs that oxygen tank and she just, she storms out of there with like a real sense of purpose. And they're both oh, strutting through waist deep water. Oh, Misty all day. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's got it. She I mean, not quite going. bionic strut muffin level. But... <laughs> when Trent walks through the water, it seems labored, right? It just yeah. seems, she seems very top heavy. Got a lot of muscle mass. When Dr. Misty Calhoun, Misty Calhoun, if, I feel like the water moved around her. She, <laughs> it got out of her she, way. Yeah. There, oh, there Ooh, it is. Yep. She's more lithe. I think he needs to do some yoga. Yeah, to loosen up through the water. Yeah. Yeah, he should come to our water walking some class. Water ballet. Yeah, on Saturday. <laughs> no, but the, no. Listen, I'm telling you. What do you think, Jay? Because I think the water moves around Misty. Yeah, it seems I, I would, just, yeah. It knows. She cuts it like a shark. Yeah, she moves through that thing. Finn. It's impressive. She goes right through it. She does. Yeah, it's it's I, I, it's just the, the look of determination on her face. She knows what she's doing. She knows where she's going. She's on a mission. And Nails it. Immediately afterwards, the the room shakes and the water the the stairwell starts filling up with water. She says she goes out to the wet pool, but does she make another hole somewhere else? I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, she throws the acetylene torch back, so she hasn't got that anymore. So maybe she just like kick, kicks a hole in a, in a wall. And swims out that way. I mean, she's a fanatic, from what she's... we've learned from Carl Durant. Mark, I think you need to make a diagram and map her route. Jay's doing I'm, I'm already on it. Ooh, I'm very on nice. It. I'm trying. It's I love a good diagram. They're, they always stuff. help. I'm telling you, I really hope Dr. Misty Calhoun, Trent Slater, and Aaron Elroy are in the fourth film. I really hope so. Because Stephen C. 3, it picks up with this one. There's no shared characters, but it, it picks up on the plot. Yeah. So. Bring them back. They're out there somewhere. Do we think they would pick up the man versus machine angle in that as well? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. How do you, what do you think they would do with that? Well, they'd have to combine it with Deep Sea 3's environmental mission. Mm -hmm. Somehow. So, hmm. Have you seen the movie Tusk? Uh, Justin Long. I haven't seen it, but I'm very familiar with it and I will never watch it. 
I I I love it. I, I watch the documentary. I listen to the commentary. I, I've talked about it on the podcast. Trent Slater starts drinking the Durant juice, but there's some oh, side no. effects, and he turns into a half shark. He turns into Michael Beach. What? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> they bring Michael Beach back for the next. Wait, and then, then this they, just became Justice League. And then they put, yeah, and then they put robot gear on him. And the robots take him over. And then it's them trying to stop him before he stops the world and raises Skynet. Wasn't that a show when we were kids? There was some cyborg shark man. There was action figures of that. There street was there sharks. street sharks. Yeah. Street sharks, yes, that's what it was. Yeah. We said that at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the, one of the Ninja that Turtles spin-offs, or rip-offs, I think, yeah. That was in my head. I could picture the characters. That's what I see. Street sharks. <laughs> Did you ever have Sharky and George? Was that a UK thing? Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, know. that's another. Uh, Sharky and George crime busts at the sea. What? Uh, that's yeah. amazing. There's like a shark detective and his little. I think, I think George is like a flounder. Or his little fish, a, a sidekick. <laughs> Sharky oh, and yeah, George. That up. That's amazing. We had shark bites, the the gummy snacks. And we had lava girl and shark boy. I, I'm familiar with them, but I, again, haven't seen the film. No intention of ever seeing the film. <laughs> I just, I, now I know what these sharks remind me of. I feel like these sharks are, they remind me of, a, like, they're in a corn maze or the the, the shrubbery maze in The Shining, oh, and they're yeah. just going, ah! Like, they're not thinking about where they're going. <laughs> like, you just got to lock them in a mental box. Yeah. <laughs> they're not trying to get out. They're not trying to, because they disappear for long periods of time. I bet they're just, they're not even hunting. They're just going, ah! They're just pinballing around the facility. <laughs> yes. If they if they run into someone, great. They don't <laughs> exactly. Snack on them, but if yeah, they don't, they're still not... great. They're just having fun. Yeah, and then they they bomb past Aaron. That oh man, they should have that. What I, I come home in the morning. Blah, 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 blah. Wait, sharks just want to have fun. <laughs> sharks just want to have fun. <laughs> and sharks just want to have fun. I think they do though. Yeah, they're just. Pin- I love that word pinballing. They're just pinballing around a corn maze in Iowa. They have no idea where they're going. And if they get a snack, they're happy about it. Mm-hmm. It just makes me happy. I love these baby Findy, sharks. Findy Lauper. Yeah, Cindy, Cindy. Findy Lauper. Oh. oh, my gosh. Yes. Findy. Oh, man. I'm done. That's it. Sharks just want to have fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. But I don't know about Goonies are good enough. I guess that's not. I can't do that one. Even though it's good. I want Newfound Glory to cover that shark song. To do a, oh, that would be great. From the, from the screen to your stereo. Mm-hmm. Very good cover album, New Found Glory. They should have written that as the theme song for the movie. Yeah, not, uh, wait, swimming in the deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dramatic. It's, it's beautiful. It's I mean, the production quality they put into just that song. Is that part of the video? Is that part of Dr. Misty Calhoun's video? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've discussed it, yeah. The, okay. The, Either that music is playing during a presentation or the whole band is going around with her. That's what it is. Yeah. It almost seems like the opener for one of those moody teen dramas from the early 2000s on TV. Yeah. And just Dawson's crying through the credits the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, um, the Buffy song was kind of like that. Really? Oh, hell yes. No, Wasn't it a rock song? song? The start of the Angel song is kind of similar. Yeah, the Angel song, that's what it was. Oh, yeah, I could see that. I mean, the, or the, the first... charm song. Oh, I don't know the charm song. But the, the Angel song, it starts off really melodramatic and then it kicks in when, when Angel arrives at the city to help, then it really goes all rocky. Because he's like, mm-hmm. yeah. Strings kick in. Anyway, <laughs> we're watching Angel at the moment. Uh... Last question <laughs> before we get out of here. Who would you rather combat? Baby Sharks? Baby Zillas from Godzilla 1998? The baby piranhas from Piranha 3D, the compies from Jurassic World 2 that eat Peter Stormare when he goes to the bathroom mm-hmm. 80 yards away from base camp, or the critters from Critters. Who the little hairy. Fight. Yeah. Who... Huh. I feel like it, w- it wouldn't be the baby sharks because they don't have any kind of a logic to them. They just. <laughs> there's, there's no fighting them. <laughs> I can't figure them out. I think. I'd like to fight the baby sharks because they're not actively hunting me. They're just sort of going everywhere. Mm-hmm. And if they just see you, you're in trouble. Maybe I could sneak up on them. They're partying and you scare them? Mm-hmm. And trap them. Ah! <laughs> you got us, lady! <laughs> they, they, they tag you and now you're it and you got to try and catch them. 
<laughs> Come on! <laughs> They're just so chaotic. They're not. It's not like the mean, you know, bad guys in other movies that just want to kill you, and they're they'll, they'll do anything to do it. All right, so you're the baby sharks. What about you, Jay? Uh, I, I, I don't. I, 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 mean, I, I want a compi, so I would say the compi is because I, I, I just want to meet them and train them and have them for my own. But also, they could very easily eat me because their, their bites have a little bit of uh, paralysis to them as well. Oh, uh, is that what they said in the movie? In the in in the in the book, they say it in the book. Oh. They, they don't they don't say a lot of things about them in the film. Other than it's little dinosaurs that eat you. Enjoy. Uh, they're like chickens. Uh, but that's so cute. I would- I would I would take the compies because if you just stay in a group and don't walk a hundred yards or go to the bathroom and then get lost, you're safe. Yeah, I think that's that's wise. Uh, yeah, and they're they're land based, so if you do get in the water and swim away, they won't be able to follow you. Whereas, yeah. well, then again, I suppose with the baby sharks, just stay on land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if it's water world, well, then the sharks are going to win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bit nice knowing I you. Can't... I can't wait until the next film when they adapt to freshwater baby sharks. Whoa! Or brackish water. Baby well, the, the bull sharks they found. They, didn't they say they found them on a river, or were they lying? Oh, I can't remember. Because the, the next film is when they get when they adapt to space. Yeah. Yes. So they travel with Tyrese. No, they travel with Roman and Tej in Fast well, Nine. Space sharks almost have to be the fifth one because that could be the turning point for the franchise, much like Fast. Yeah. Space sharks. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. Thank you for joining us, Megan. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you for um, uh, allowing me to embrace my love of Deep Blue Sea. You know, you just do what you love. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me happy. You love, you like, how would you rank these three movies? Uh, one, three, two. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing provocative. <laughs> <laughs> It's the reason we don't ask that question every week, because uh, that would be that would be the answer. Uh, <laughs> now that you've talked about it a little bit more, Megan, do you like Deep Blue Sea two more? Yeah, I mean it's entertaining. I I like that it's got those more tra- classic horror elements. You split everybody up, which is kind of interesting. They're a little bit split up in the first movie, but not as segmented as this. So it's cool how they do the different colors, and you watch them each going through their own thing. More so, I would say they spent time in water in this one, escaping, which I think made it trickier with the colors and the corridors. We had a little bit more time, you know, in different types of atmospheres in Deep Blue Sea 1. Mm-hmm. You know, in the shaft, dry, wet, in a in a dry hallway, in a wet hallway, just a little bit more varied, but... I got you. Who's your favorite character? Oh, um, that's a good question. I mean, I guess Misty... Dr. Misty Calhoun? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she takes care of, she takes care of business. Yeah, I think probably her. <laughs> or that guy who drove the boat in the beginning. <laughs> you liked him. Yeah, because he got the name of the, the place wrong, and she corrected him, and he just was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. The lawyer. You like his yellow tie? No. Oh, okay. I just like his doesn't give a crap attitude. Got it. So oh, uh, yeah. early on when we started covering this, I asked Mark if you if you would want to be a guest on Megan, and Mark said that he would he'd never let you watch this film, would never make you watch this film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so our our opinion on it has definitely changed, in that we we prefer this film now than when we used to, because otherwise he he wouldn't have let you watch it. I think. <laughs> I love this movie now. Yeah, you keep saying that. I love it. I've grown to love it, Jay. I've 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 pulled a complete one eighty. In regards to this film. You I, know, I, as they say at the end of our scene, just take it one rung at a time. <laughs> but, but uh, you know who's not? Trent Slater's taking them two at a time. <laughs> but, and yet, when he gets to the top, Durant, just behind him, Durant has done a phenomenal job keeping up with, with the, the man mountain that is Trent Slater. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, is, and is in need of yoga strutting. Yeah. Yeah, he needs some good stretching. Well, that's it. Maybe maybe he got near the top and just like cramped up and had to take a little break so Durant had a chance to catch up. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything, anything else to plug, Megan? No, I would just say, you know, taking on water without power, on fire, and structural damage. <laughs> Feels like a very uh, Friday Night Lights mantra. You could just put it on stuff. <laughs> yeah. Shirts. It's very inspirational. I would say it to my team that I coached. Mm-hmm. I'll tell my students that. Just remember, when you are these four things, you can still survive. Great. 
Okay, well, this chapter is 32% blue. It's pretty blue. One of the bluer chapters we've had so far. And we're getting...